Good morning. My name is uh, James Kim, Chairman and CEO of uh, Bamcham Korea. Unfortunately, Korea is going through its fourth wave of the pandemic. I'm sure we're all going to persevere through this, uh, you know, pandemic. But it's also good to know that through the digital transformation, we can all continue to be very productive. Today, uh, we're discussing a very important topic that applies to all of us. I know that many of our companies have implemented a variety of uh, different work from home policies over the past year and a half. And even at Amsham, we've also been allowing staff to work from home as needed, including today, where I think we have 40% uh, of our staff working from the office. However, as the Korean government continues to roll out va uh, vaccines, many of us will return to the office on a normal basis. And I know that many of us have questions about what is the best way to do this. So today's session will discuss uh, key factors to keep in mind as we welcome our employees back to work, including after this fourth, fourth uh, wave of the pandemic. Our speakers will cover safety concerns, vaccine protocols, and ways to restore company culture as we begin to return to the work uh, to work at the office. I know many of us are dying to get back and interact with our colleagues face to face. I'm very certain that today is going to be very informative and, and helpful for all of you. So even for me, I look forward to learning and uh, getting more information from the various speakers we have today. So. This is a debut for our two new HR committee co-chairs, uh, Ms. Uh, Chung sing He, the Vice President of People at McDonald's. I've worked with, uh, you know, I guess we call her SH for several years, and she is a, a really, really a fantastic expert and a leader of people at such an iconic company called McDonald's. Uh, another co-chair is, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Park Kyu Hyun, he is the head of HR for North Asia at JJ Johnson and Johnson. Uh, I know they're doing a, a fantastic job. Uh, the CEO of Johnson Johnson Korea is on the board, and he continues to give all of us a lot of updates at the board meetings on how the vaccines are really progressing in Korea. So these are two co-chairs that I know we can all learn a lot from. I also want to thank uh, Yumi Jun uh, from Pursor Kelly. Obviously, given the position she has, she is a true expert in the world of HR. And I know that she continues to be a great resource for all of us. Unfortunately, Matt Jones, who is another co-chair of this very important committee, is not able to join us today. So we have a, a very good fill-in for Matt. And his name is uh, Rob Flemmer. Uh, Rob Flemmer is a senior foreign attorney from Kim and Chang. He's also a real expert in HR and all these policies. So I'd like to say that even without Matt, we have a fantastic substitute with Rob uh, serving as a moderator today. So without further delay, Rob, why don't I have you run the show from beginning to end and uh, let's make it a very good session today. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you, James. Really, really appreciate the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I will be uh, starting with uh, the legal aspects of, of what to keep in mind as, as we reopen our offices uh, in Korea. Uh, and then I'll, I'll hand it off uh, to S.H. Jung from McDonald's after that. <clears throat> and uh, we'll go through our session in that fashion. Uh, and we'll have an opportunity for, for questions and answers at the end. But uh, in the meantime, please do feel free to uh, write in your questions as we go, and we'll try to get to as many of those as possible in the time that we have. Uh, so without further ado, I will go ahead and share my presentation. So what companies should be thinking about as we return to the workplace uh, as COVID-19 continues? Uh, and I just saw that our uh, case numbers yesterday were over 1,200 again, uh, with about 1,000 of those being in Seoul, uh, the Seoul metropolitan area. So this is obviously still a very real issue uh, that we're going to be having to deal with for at least a little while. So we'll talk about, or I'll talk about, uh, the, some vaccination-related issues that you should keep in mind, <clears throat> working hour issues, uh, including a, a recent issue that has come up. 
uh, working space and work from home uh, and how to manage that. Uh, if you're going to have people coming to the office or some kind of hybrid method. And uh, also some guidelines uh, regarding social distancing and mask wearing indoors. So first, the vaccination related issues. So in Korea, uh, we've been primarily dealing with guidelines uh, on what employers should be doing. And, and with regard to vaccinations, uh, there is a guideline or a suggestion uh, from the, the authorities that companies should offer paid leave to employees uh, who have been vaccinated so that they can be vaccinated and recover. Some people are having uh, adverse reactions or, or some reaction to either the first or second shot, uh, depending on the shot that they're getting. Uh, and so the health authorities the, and the labor authorities are encouraging employers to provide at least a couple of days off uh, as needed. This isn't a requirement, but it is highly encouraged and uh, it makes sense. You wanna have your employees uh, be in tip top shape and, and feel okay when they come back to the office uh, and, and be able to take some time off if they're not feeling well. Uh, and in terms of whether an employer can require employees to be vaccinated to return to the workplace, there's not a lot of precedent for this historically, uh, but in principle, if uh, having uh, vaccinated employees as part of your safe work plan, you are required to uh, maintain a safe workplace uh, by the OSHA, by the Occupational Safety and Health Act. Uh, and to uh, the guidelines also suggest that um, employers should have a, a safety plan when it comes to COVID. Uh, if part of that is that you want your employers to be vaccinated, then you can in principle um, require employees to be vaccinated before they return to the workplace. Now, practically speaking, uh, if, if employees are not getting vaccinated and time is stretching out for a very long period of time, uh, having an indefinite uh, uh, ban on return to workplace, probably not that feasible, uh, especially if you start getting vaccinated uh, numbers up around 70, 80% of your workforce. Uh, but that is something uh, that you can do at least in, in the beginning. Uh, but you should be doing it uh, thoughtfully uh, and have a good plan and, and also make sure that it integrates well into your overall plan of maintaining a safe workplace. And in terms of whether an employer can collect information about whether an employee is vaccinated or not, uh, again, not a lot of historical uh, precedent for this, but in terms of the privacy law in Korea, uh, our, our view is that this type of information is, is, would be considered sensitive health information. And so it's going to fall under the privacy laws requirements in terms of notice and consent to collect and use that kind of information uh, as an employer. Uh, so you should review your privacy forms, make sure that uh, this is one of the types of information that can be gathered. Uh, and if it's not, uh, you should come up with a, a, a supplemental privacy form uh, to be able to do this. So now some working hour issues. So one of the questions that we've received from a lot of our, our clients um, is whether it's possible to apply a partial Dean working hour system to employees that work from home a few days a week. Uh, and in principle, this is something that you can do. Uh, so the requirements for a Dean working hour system, just to remind everyone, is that the employees have to be working outside the office and as a result of that, uh, it, it is difficult to track their working hours. So as long as you are meeting those two different requirements, uh, then in principle, it's okay to have a deemed working hour system. So, and a deemed working hour system can be based either on, uh, under the law, either on the prescribed working hours, so the working hours in the employment agreement or the rules of employment, uh, the amount of time it, it, it takes to actually perform the, the duties at hand, uh, or uh, per a, uh, a labor management agreement with the employee representative. Uh, and that latter uh, choice is the preferred method of the Ministry of Employment and Labor. They, they have in their guidelines said that they prefer that companies, if they're going to enact a deemed working hour system, enter into one of those uh, labor management agreements with the employee representative. Uh, and in terms of the trends of Korean companies regarding work from home and working in office, um, the larger conglomerates uh, have, uh, have gone to a hybrid type system where employees can work outside the office for a couple of days a week, uh, but they have not gone to a full uh, work from home system. 
Um, so they're not giving employees the option, for example, of, of working entirely from home moving forward, but there is a kind of a flex schedule um, method that they are, are allowing employees to do. Uh, and then another working hour issue that is, has come up recently uh, and that you know, employers are going to need to pay attention to because it applies to companies with five or more employees is the expansion of the substitute holiday system. So these are for holidays that are going to fall on weekends. Uh, and in the past that was more limited, but now it's been going to impact all the holidays uh, going forward. So for 2021, that means in August, uh, Liberation Day is, is on Sunday. So the next day, the Monday, August 16th is going to be the substitute holiday. Uh, and that's also for National Foundation Day, Hungle Proclamation Day and Christmas this year. Uh, so those are going to be substitute holidays that companies should start putting on their calendars. So now working space and, and working from home. So as companies are, are moving towards open seating plans with reduced working space uh, and, and more work from home options, we do see that trend. Uh, companies are looking at you know, whether they need to have as much office space. Uh, that's having an effect on you know, employees and labor unions are noticing that. Uh, and they are, are raising several issues we've seen. Uh, such as saying, look, you're saving some costs from your reduced office space. You should share that with employees. You should share that in the form of increased wages, benefits, whatnot. Um, and they're, they're, they're pushing that issue, especially uh, obviously with labor unions uh, and collective bargaining over wage agreements, for example. Uh, and also that companies should be making <clears throat> financial contributions towards the cost of employees' utility bills or their meals while working from home. Uh, for example, if you know, companies had subsidized meals before in the office and you know, employees are working at home, they wanna also have some kind of subsidy for meals while they're working from home as well. The MOEL has guidelines on this. There's not a legal requirement, but there are guidelines that the MOEL uh, has some suggestions on this. So their position is that expenses incurred by employees for consumable equipment, such as pens, paper, so on, should be reimbursed by the employer. Um, but if there are um, expenses that would have been incurred anyway, uh, the, the employee's expenses uh, for their, their internet plan, for their mobile phone plan, if those stay the same, uh, whether or not the employee is working in the office, uh, an employer wouldn't need to reimburse those to the workers. So, and then finally, some uh, discussion of the guidelines on social distancing and the mask wearing indoors. So, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, our, our caseload in uh, Korea and especially in the Seoul area has gone up recently. Uh, and um, as I mentioned also, Korea has mainly dealt with preventing infection via guidelines uh, and not strict requirements. So, there are a number of guidelines they've suggested based on the social distancing level, for example, we're at level two uh, in the Seoul area right now, uh, th that comes with a number of, of recommendations. Uh, for example, one of the recommendations is that uh, one third of the employees be working from home when they get to level two. Uh, Seoul is also, the greater Seoul area has also had uh, a mask mandate that's been going on for quite some time now. Uh, and there is a, a fine, an administrative fine of 100,000 won if, if that's violated. Uh, and it's also been uh, limiting gatherings uh, in, in this old metropolitan area to only four people uh, for social matters. Uh, business meetings and things aren't, aren't subject to that, but certainly people's lunches, going to dinner after work, those kind of things have been affected by that. Uh, and of course, restaurants and bars and things are having to close at, at 10 p.m. So those, are supposed, those distancing guidelines are supposed to be relaxed recently, but uh, that is not going to be the case. It was supposed to be relaxed as of July 1st. Uh, that was postponed for a week. And then yesterday it was extended again for another week. Um, and with case numbers where they are, if that continues, we would expect that to con uh, the, the postponement of uh, the relaxed social distancing measures to also be postponed. Um, that mask mandate in particular, uh, that is to be relaxed for outdoor spaces. For those who have received at least one shot of the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, and the current plan is to relax uh, the mask mandate for indoor spaces uh, for vaccinated people as well, 
once Korea has reached a 70% vaccination rate. And that's currently projected for November. Obviously, that's a moving target depending on you know, vaccinations and, and how fast that's going to go. Um, but hopefully, um, that will continue apace so that by uh, late fall uh, and, or early winter, uh, we are at the point of maybe people not having to wear masks indoors and, and getting back to a more normal uh, type of schedule of things. So with that, I'll stop sharing uh, and I will pass it off uh, to S.H. Jung from McDonald's uh, to carry on. Good morning, everyone. This is Sung Hye Jung from McDonald's, Korea. It's very nice to meet you online. And today, I will present uh, different from the legal perspective, but more soft ones, but fundamental ones about the employee people engagement and culture throughout the pandemic period. So before going into the contents, I'd like to introduce you briefly about McDonald's. I know everybody knows about Big Mac French fries, but as a company, we opened our first restaurant in Abuja in 1988 before the Seoul Olympic Games. Now we just uh, celebrated our 33 years anniversary. And then now we have 403 restaurants with about 15,000 employees and we serve over 380,000 customers every day. Then, okay. The pandemic has brought a tremendous changes in our personal life and work life. And at work, this has dumped new challenges to the management and also the HR professionals. We have to find a way to run our business without disruptions while maintaining our people engagement and corporate cultures, which sounds impossible, which actually is. So there is no choice but to compromise and adapt new ways of working. But after one and a half years of outbreak, we've also realized that the fundamentals stay same regardless of the situations and the importance of the fundamentals even become bigger. So here, I'd like to share what we have been doing for the fundamentals throughout the pandemics, even before, and which I believe will apply to the post-pandemic as well. Hope it can be of any help for your planning after return to work. I have categorized three big topics which are very closely interconnected for the presentation purpose. The first one is communications and engagement. We all know that communication is very important and especially the employee communications when we are also remotely working. So not only continuing the employee communications, but increase the frequency of employee communications using various vehicles become very critical. So we continue to do our town hall meetings, online, offline, and also having made, produced the various videos for the business landscape, for MD's message, new marketing promotions, new values, and so on. So we were told during the pandemic or remote, the communication doesn't need to be long. It should be short, but frequent. So those short videos and short meetings has been emphasized. We also continued our pulse survey twice a year and simple just the survey monkey on some just the quick answers, quick purse check for our employees. Through this first survey, 
we could check how our people feel at the moment and what they need, and we can take our follow-up actions from the company level, department level, team levels. And then two years ago, just before the pandemic, globally, we have refreshed our values. It is not something totally new, but we just refreshed uh, based on the current situation and then our uh, moving forward. So for cascading and informing our new values, we have kept up, kept up all various workshops and this knowledge transferring. So during the pandemic period, we keep continuing this by embedding our values into our policies, company events, recognitions, we reiterated the importance of our values and our company plans were made on this. So all these activities has become a foundation and also the guiding light to our people who are working all over the country and then remotely at home. The second one is empowerment and fun connection. In a hierarchical society like Korea, it is really hard to have full empowerment. I cannot even say that we are like that. We just try to have this empowerment in place every day. And it's been working during the pandemic. Well, so we expect it should be the company culture on the way as well. We have a good tradition of cross-functional collaboration. It is not only for the cross-functional collaboration teamwork, but also people development. So not only company outing or office move. So all these activities have worked for our empowerment and then engaging our people and then the junior people take leadership. And early last year, we have formed a many smile team consisting of below the manager level employees from various functions. They actually were encouraged. The team was formed to make our office more excited with fun, to have a fun environment, fun atmosphere in the office. So they were busy to make our people excited with the budget, which we could not spend on the company gathering. So having budget is another different one. And also the executive, they are just the sponsors and cheerleaders. So what they did was from like small things or lucky draw or providing snacks, cakes or saved kits and really the music playing in the office all day to a newsletter, weekly newsletter about people's stories. As you can see in the slide, this is Step Inside, and also a three months working campaign for our employees who are separately working in their place or sometimes also working together, but for their health, they have designed this and make our people engaged. They are the one who knows our people's need and what they like the most. So they designed all those events or programs, which are also better accepted by our people. And not only what the Make Me Smile team did, all company functions or company actions, we try to embed small feel good moments with fun. People are so down gloomy during this pandemic time. And also post pandemic, we will have still that aftermath. 
So font is a very important element to make our paper better connected. So good example is such utilizing active chat box actively during our town hall or even for the company option for the charity. So people get to chat on the chat box, exchange their laughter and jokes. These things, even though it looks silly or it sounds like a small thing, but that gives a vibration to the whole organization. And the third one is really trust and accountability. Different from the cross-functional team, which that the senior executives are not involved as a member of the team, the risk management team consists of many top management team, including MD. And we get daily report what's going on about restaurants and or people and have regular meetings for this, not only regular checks or for making quick decision and action plans for our employees, safety and health. As these meetings are going on over one years, one and a half years, now people have their trust, belief that our office environment is safe. Working in our restaurant is safe. And in terms of flexibility in working, we are doing currently doing this hybrid working, just working from home and working in the office. So mixed. And also we have had this open sitting plans. But in terms of flexibility, we have this working hour, flexible working hour, like many of you have, is starting from nine, eight to 10 or smart, that flexible working hour. And also working nine hours from Monday to Thursday and Friday afternoon off. And also because we are open seats, it means a free seats, a people is just moving around with their notebooks. So already we have this flexibility in working has been in place somewhat in the system. Of course, this pandemic has made this flexibility a lot stronger. But during that time, we have minimized our control of uh, just uh, checking what time they start or whether they are working full nine hours or not. The minimum control is possible because we are heavily relying on the individual accountability. Everybody has their performance goals and have their regular progress check with their managers. That is a lot more effective than the company try to control their working hours. So basically this trust-based and accountability-based that has become our flexible working, remote working, virtual working system is possible. So this will be my last slide, which I will share some results from our first recent PERS survey, uh, which was done in March and April time. And 93% of our office staff has participated. In the survey, we had open-ended questions. Like this. The first one was, what has the company done that makes you believe they care about people? And among many responses, the most frequently mentioned one is this, communications walking from home, which means flexibility, and make me smile activities, and the efforts of for the employees' health and safety. This was actually about over 90% of the answers are from these three categories. 
And the second one is, what do you need from leaders to continuously improve our values-based culture? Because as I mentioned, we recently refreshed our values and then we worked hard for our values and culture. And also here, the most frequently answered mentioned ones are communications, our values, embedding our values, live by our values, and the leaders to be a role model, and also trust and transparency. These are what our people, they want to have. It's what they want. And I don't think it would be different from yours as well. So these are the fundamentals we've been working during the pandemic period. And also post pandemic, we will work on the same thing. So while you are planning, let's focus on our fundamentals. Let's not forget it. Thank you. Now I will turn to Q from Johnson & Johnson. Thank you, Sunye, for taking us through the helpful tips and obviously the fundamentals, um, HR considerations um, to really engage and lead the organization through the pandemic, right? And obviously it's always a good reminder uh, that we need to keep our ears on the ground, especially in times like this. Um, for my uh, presentation, I really just have four slides. And so I'll be taking, uh, I'll be spending the next 10 to 15 minutes sharing the current thinking from j, &J on how we work uh, post-pandemic, more specifically around how we're going about uh, defining the future of work. Um, before I get started, um, just as a way of introduction, I'm sure most of the audience today are familiar with J&J &J for the baby brand and consumer products and or the Tylenol business case from the university. But in the last 130 years, J&J &J has been shaping the healthcare in the areas beyond sort of off the shelf consumer products that create the initial touch points with our customers, uh, notably in pharmaceutical and medical devices, making a difference to the lives of millions of patients around the world. Uh, J&J started the career operation in 1983 with the Ansei Pharmaceutical Division before adding consumer and medical devices in the latter part of the 80s. Um, we currently have about 1,400 employees uh, headquartered out of Yongsan, and three manufacturing sites, and four sales offices across Korea. So, um, I would like to invite you to just take a moment to reflect on 2020. I'm sure uh, you would agree that we were faced with the worst global pandemic of our lifetime. As a market, Korea was put on the map, leading the narrative with the global on how to manage, respond to COVID-19 threats as one of the earlier markets to be affected. While those of us working in Korea we're fortunate to have been shielded from the tra tragedies that really struck other countries. It's worth pointing out that J and J um, had been on a journey to change how we work prior to the pandemic, um, office renovation to accommodate mobile work, flex hours, work from home policy to meet the changing needs of our employees and local employment regulations. But Depending on the team uh, manager, the adoption of the new ways of working varied widely. Well, COVID-19 changed all of that. Many leaders who thought offices, you know, off time in office are essential to the business uh, learned that employees can work just as effectively outside of the office. The forced shift to remote work created trust in what we had and uncovered new possibilities. Employees save time in commuting, increased flex allowed employees to take care of family members and better cater to the lifestyle needs. However, every time we started to get excited about the possibility of the pandemic or the crisis coming to an end, 
new wave of community spread hit and situation continued on, right? Um, as James pointed out earlier, we are dealing with a possible um, another wave uh, hitting Korea. And so as this time went on, um, new challenges and gaps started to surface. Um, simple alignment um, decisions that could have been resolved over a quick chat at work now require scheduling, adding to the endless meeting spree uh, for a relationship-based company like J&J, where social capital among colleagues and network are crucial for employees to be successful. Um, well, new joiners did not have sufficient time to build that required ecosystem around them. The existing employees largely really burned their social capital, um, what they have sort of amassed over the course of um, their career in the last year. And now they're creating an opportunity to really come together in person to co-create and collaborate. Culture was also starting to shift as a result of this unplanned change as we didn't really have enough time and the opportunity to lay the foundation uh, for sustainable uh, remote ways of working. Now switching gear to 2021, as the world around us prepare for more stable COVID-19 managed work environment, we listen to our employees' feedback and their clear desire to harness the learning from the pandemic and the need to evolve our ways of working, building on the existing portfolio of Flex was very clear. At j, &J we're preparing a shift with the global standard and framework to create new norms across the global footprint, but with a very local approach in recognizing that each market has different needs and different nuances. We're looking to ensure that we maintain what has made J&J great while learning from what we've done uh, during the crisis to deliver for the future. Together, we're trying to define the future of work with a dedicated team or a dedicated project team to engage and explore emerging work practices that make the most dynamic physical and digital environments to foster collaboration, creativity, and community. So what are we playing for? We know that the best work comes from when people are at their best. This is different for individuals and for different roles. We want to continue to connect, connect us in ways which focus on human connection and collaboration. We want to protect the culture that make j, j unique. And we want to reimagine. We have the opportunity to not only accelerate and amplify when, where, and how we work on so many different levels, but also to courageously experiment with the future of work opportunities. So we want to really deliver and embed the next chapter in the evolution of our work experience. Reimagine with a portfolio of solutions really to cater to the different needs of our employees. Given the increased importance of an agile organization, both to productivity, talent attraction and retention, we must consider solutions to meet the needs of our employees and the organization. At J&J, &J, we're adopting a hybrid model for office-based employees with a global standard of three days on site and two days remote per week. And this is due to our value um, and appreciation for in-person interaction and connection. We also believe it's an important way to learn and sustain our culture and purpose. As we evolve our ways of working, we want to retain this connection we have and find the right balance with the value we see from virtual working. We feel that this hybrid model would allow us to capture the energy, inspiration, and connectivity of in-person interaction while empowering each of our employees to find the right productivity and personal balance. This combined with a broad portfolio of existing flexible work arrangement for individual needs. So in a hypothetical situation, if needed, our employees will be able to have full remote work experience with a simple approval from his or her line manager. A 
three days on site and uh, two day remote with an option of full flex and remote for our employees who need it. It sounds really good on paper, but we do not want to underestimate the change effort when we truly think about embedding hybrid as a way of working. It's actually more than just an announcement. And it's not one size fits all approach. We must ensure that we support the effort for behavioral change and embedding hybrid in our culture and our daily ways of working. So we need to focus on shifting the performance conversation, for example, to an outcome led, not just time investment and effort. Um, and make it, while it makes a lot of sense, right? But um, we have also noticed that removing bias changing habits built over time has really been a tough one to crack, especially for managers who have spent 10, 20 years with the current organization uh, managing uh, their work in a very particular way. Being able to lead a team that is working remote does require a very specific set of skills. Leaders must be able to accommodate and appreciate the different needs of our employees to be able to bring the best out from the team. How do we support the team members when they're not physically located in the same space? How do we manage conflict arising from virtual remote ways of work? How do we identify coaching opportunities and provide feedback when you cannot actually see the employees in action, right? Um, how do we make sure that employee experiences are consistent and that they have what they need to be successful when they're on different types of you know, either on-site or off-site work. Um, even running a meeting uh, with on and off, offline sort of hybrid group of participants. Um, how do we minimize the potential gap uh, from communication? We also wanna look at how we're going to support employees working remotely. At two days per week, we need to think about how we help create right environment outside of our office to ensure that they have what they need to be able to perform? Is our travel and expense policy aligned to ensure smooth transition between office and remote? Uh, simple things such as phone and mobile allowances. Uh, do we need to revisit the current structure to make sure that it is in line with the future that we're trying to create? Um, we'll be looking at our office environment. It was set based on remote work, yes, but increasingly we're working with global regional remote teams that require additional consideration on meeting room environments uh, so that we can accommodate teams joining on and offline all at the same time. The volume of virtual meetings um, would also mean that we need to think differently about uh, our office uh, floor plan to free up more communication space. Um, we need more collaboration uh, area to be able to maximize the time when the teams are on site. Um, I guess in the spirit of inclusion as well, we want to make sure that we do not accidentally and unintentionally alienate field-based employees or those in manufacturing sites. So we'll be looking at what we can take away uh, from this hybrid ways and explore with these groups of employees on how do we create um, their version of flex work. The areas to review and discuss will grow but I wanted to share with this group today on where we are headed as J&J &J, as we look toward the future post COVID-19. Um, as many markets prepare for some form of return to work and as many of us are thinking about, you know, um, decisions and various stance in the workplace options, um, we will be looking at the company's purpose and strategy. It's always a trade-off, but there are significant differences in what employees want and or favored. Uh, and in addition, there are significant demographic differences as well that we've noticed in our uh, communication with our employees. Whatever the case, these differences point to the danger that we face as HR in making uh, workplace decisions. So if there's one key message that I wanted to share back with this group would be that as HR, we need to absolutely ensure that the change work always takes variety of stakeholder input, including uh, different groups of employees that are in your care. Thank you so much for listening and I'll pass it now back over to Rob 
for Q and A. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very informative, uh, and I think both of your presentations <clears throat> indicate that um, employers have a fair amount of flexibility. It may it may seem that in Korea it's a pretty inflexible place at times to do business from an HR perspective. Um, but at least in the in the context of how best to reopen your office, uh, there are certain requirements, obviously, you have to follow about working hours and things like that. But uh, I think as these presentations have, have demonstrated, you do have some flexibility to figure out uh, what is going to work best for your workplace uh, and your, your employees and, and your business. Uh, so that is definitely something to keep in mind. Um, we actually don't seem to have any questions at this point. Um, I certainly encourage people, if, if anything has you know, raised any questions in your mind, to go ahead and, and shoot those to us now or um, after uh, afterwards. We're always open to receive questions later if, if that's your preference. Uh, but uh, I think if, if there are no questions, um, we can close things out uh, and uh, finish up and wrap up the, the presentation now. Uh, in, unless there's any other uh, matters that we wanted to discuss at this time. Oh, there is a question. Uh, the question is uh, that wor if working at home can be uh, of an HR benefit. Uh, can it also be used as a recruiting tool? Um, and SH and Q, um, in your experience, um, can working at home or come a flexible arrangement uh, be used as, as a recruiting tool or as a, as a benefit that you can uh, present to candidates? Um, thanks, Yumi, for the question. And I think it is a very important tool, right? And it's part of the employee value proposition that we need to work toward. I guess um, the key thing for us at the moment is how do we make sure that we are able to provide the right experience uh, for the employees who are perhaps working from home? So we will have to get that right. Um, but it does increase the reach into a talent pool. So in Korea, it's much smaller market. But, um, you know, if you think about it, theoretically, I could have a talent sitting in Busan and, and working remotely, right? So it's definitely an area that we will be working toward and we will have to get it right uh, going into the future. Over to you, Singh. sorry. Uh, I think you, you were about to get started. Um, no, no, not really. <laughs> okay. Basically work flexibility is a benefit to the recruiting uh, purpose as well, especially for mo working moms but having the flexibility is a very strong benefit for them. So just pushing everybody working from home would not be benefit to everybody. It varies. Some people, they think working in the office would be benefit. But this work flexibility, working flexibility is clearly a benefit for recruiting, for hiring working mom, especially, and then the top talent. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you everybody um, for a great session, very informative session. Uh, and thank you everyone for attending. Uh, and uh, next time, uh, Matt Jones will return for the next webinar. Uh, but until then, thank you all very much. <laughs>